Hello everyone. The chapter that we are going to talk about now is biological products. It covers three main subtopics. Sutures and ligatures, blood products and plasma substitutes or plasma volume expander. In this particular lecture, we are going to cover sutures and ligatures. The first thing in this chapter that you will learn is the definition of suture and ligature. What are these two things and how are they different from each other? You see both the things are strand or fiber. Okay, A surgical suture is a strand or a fiber or you can say a thread which is used to hold wound edges in apposition. The word apposition, a double -P, p o s i t i o n apposition means positioning of things side by side or close together. Okay, so I repeat, it is a strand or a fiber which is used to hold wood edges in apposition during healing. And the process of applying such a strand is called suturing. So, in common language, you can also say that a suture is a thread which is used to stitch together the edges of various tissues like skin or muscle or tendon. Okay, but I would suggest you to go with the more technical definition. Now, if the same material is used without a needle to stop bleeding, how? By tying off severed blood vessels, then this strand is called as a ligature. I repeat, when such material without a needle is used to stop bleeding by tying off severed blood vessels the strand is called a ligature in common uh, or easier language it is a piece of suture which is used to shut off a blood vessel or other anatomical structure is called a ligature and the process is called ligating now, what are the ideal characteristics of suture material? First, it should be suitable for any kind of operation. It should be easy to handle. It should not be slippery while doing the surgery. There should not be reaction between the tissue and the suture. And the strength of the suture should be very so high. It should not be a knot or stitching. It should hold sick securely but without cutting the tissue or the vessel then it should be easy to thread as well as sterilize then it should not have any allergenic or carcinogenic or corrosive effect it should be absorbed with minimal tissue reaction and does not favor any kind of bacterial growth it should be very strong but simply dissolve in the body fluids the sutures can be categorized on the basis of three different things. One is their behavior in tissue, whether they are absorbable or non-absorbable. The other way of categorizing is on the basis of their structure, that is monofilament or multifilament. And then third way is to categorize according to their origin, whether it is of natural origin or synthetic origin or metallic origin. Let's first talk about the classification according to their behavior in the tissue. So the sutures may be divided into two principal classes, absorbable and non-absorbable. In the first class are found those materials that are capable of being broken down or digested by the body. Absorbable sutures can be divided as that of natural origin or synthetic origin. Catcut is a classic example. It is a classic absorbable suture which is derived from collagen rich animal tissue. It is proteinaceous in nature. So far what the mechanism is known how it gets absorbed in the tissue is that there are certain proteolytic enzymes in the tissues. Cat gut is proteinaceous in nature and there are some proteolytic uh, 
enzymes in in our tissues and then these is enzymes are responsible for the digestion of this cat gut and hence di disappearance from the wound areas many new forms uh, of absorbable sutures based on synthetic polyesters such as pga have also been introduced as alternative absorbable materials non absorbable sutures are manufactured from various materials okay they could be again of natural synthetic or metallic uh, origin or based on these materials these materials incite a minimal uh, foreign body reaction at the site of placement which resolves over time non absorbable sutures are used frequently for cardiovascular ophthalmic and neurological procedures if you have to distinguish between the two absorbable and non absorbable remember that absorbable ones undergo degradation and they have rapid loss of tensile strength within 60 days whereas non absorbable sutures are not absorbed by the body they retain their own st tensile strength for more than 60 days in natural you can see the examples of silk cotton and linen let me tell you that cotton and linen were among the earliest suture materials but the use of animal intestines and uh, other uh, other kind of sutures claim uh, great antiquity hence they are more popular i would like you to remember these examples under the categories in the in the coming slides many of these materials are discussed briefly now we start with the cat gut cat gut or surgical gut its basic constituent is collagen derived from the submucosal layer of small intestine of healthy ruminants cows or sheep A goat, and for all those who were thinking that cat gut is made up of gut or intestine of cats, the cat is probably laughing at you. No, that's not true. It is made up of cattle intestine most of the time. Before I proceed to the technical part, let me briefly tell you how this cat gut is processed for making its suture. and where else is it used is it used so by now you all are clear that it is not uh, the gut of a cat which is compulsively being used it is that of any other ruminant like cow or uh, goat so how is it processed you see when cows are slaughtered for meat the intestines are saved and then processed the part we want in order to make cat gut comes mostly from the submucosa and the external layers these two layers contain the collagen collagen is what we are looking for it is also found throughout the bodies of mammals and other vertebrates you see wherever, wherever we need a strength and elasticity both collagen is found there so it is uh mostly found in soft tissue skin for instance it has to be strong and elastic so collagen is found there the intestines also need to be strong and elastic for when we eat a lot of food you see in order in order for the uh, intestines to stretch without bursting and then contract back to the normal size after the food passes At slaughter houses, the intestines are usually slit in half, thirds, and then quarters lengthwise. This would make different thickness for different uh, uses. As I just told you, it is not just cat gut is not used just for uh, making sutures. It is used in sports also. This is just for your knowledge. So once these intestines are slit lengthwise. they are then soaked in series of solutions and caustic solvents which dissolves away all the tissue except for the strong collagen fibers once all these fibers are clean and pure it is then stretched 
twisted and allowed to dry under some tension. What remains is catgut string. It is one of the strongest strings. It's stronger than a comparable weight of steel wire. Yes, this is surprising. Various diameter catguts are produced depending on what is the ultimate goal. The first is of course the surgical industry where it is used as a suture. Another is sports. Do you know cat cut was the original racket material? It is biological and biodegradable material. So in time it does degrade. But it, it offered perfect combination of strength and spring effect what you need in a racket. Then another sport that has used cat cut before is archery. Cat cut has long been used to string bows. At least uh, as far back as ancient Egyptian times. As we know that the Egyptians really loved their cats. So clearly they didn't use their intestines for their bows. It was cattle even that time. And finally third major use of cat cut is for violence. Cat cut was the original violin string material. These days there are many other type of strings you see. But in many professional orchestras you can still find cat cut string. So this was just out of the way a little discussion on cat cut. Now let's come to the technical part. Cat cut is categorized as plain and chromicized surgical gut. Two types. Okay. The two varieties of cat gut distinguished by their resistance to absorptive action by tissue enzymes are described in USP as type A that is plain or untreated one and type C as medium treatment. As you can see in the slide there is type A, B, C and D. So type A is plain cat gut. It is not chromicized whereas type B, C and D are mildly medium and extra and with extra chromic treatment. They have different uh, time slots in which they the can availability absorb. of uh, both types reflects the surgeon's requirements for cat gut that will retain its tensile strength for varying periods of time or that will show an increased resistance to the proteolytic substances found in the body tissues. Type B, C and D are treated with chromic acid uh, for increasing the time of absorption, tensile strength and decrease the soft tissue reaction to the suture material. It is often called cat gut, but don't worry, it owes nothing to the feline species. The name comes from a small Elizabethan violin called a kit. The strings became known as kit gut, which eventually became cat gut. Natural gut string is produced from a fibrous protein known as collagen, which is found in the muscle tissue of the intestines of sheep and cattle. Traditionally, all gut strings were manufactured exclusively from sheep gut. Only recently have strings been produced from cattle intestines, or beef as it is called in the string making industry. For products that are used in such glamorous surroundings, the start of the manufacturing process is far from that. Gut is delivered to the Bow brand factory in barrels. Each contains the intestines of 1,000 cattle, which has been heavily salted as a preservative. Firstly, the salt has to be washed from the gut. This is done in five baths, three of them with softening detergent. From the washout, the gut is checked, and any that is fatty or discoloured is discarded. The strands are then laid together. The number of strands depends on the gauge that will be required. The strands are looped at both ends and go to the measuring bench. For sport strings, the length must be 42 feet. Two feet will be lost as the strings are re-looped during the process. 
The gut is then sent to the curing tank, where a finely balanced combination of chemicals will sterilize, whiten, and cure the gut. On the spinning bench, a pre-designated number of twists are put into the strings. Again, dependent on the gauge or strandage before it goes to the drying room. Here the gut is dried at a controlled level of humidity. The process can take up to three weeks, during which time the gut will have twists applied regularly. The experience and expertise of the Bow brand staff ensure that this vital stage of the process produces a perfect string. Next stop is the holding room, where it will be held for up to two weeks to ensure that the gut is totally dry. It can then be moved to a normal, uncontrolled environment. The drying strings feel quite rough at this point and are passed, one at a time, through a centerless grinder where they're polished to a smooth finish. The strings are then given a weatherproof coating. In the Bow brand factory, quality control is carried out at all stages of the process, including a final scrutiny to ensure that there are no cracks or damage to the string and that they are cosmetically acceptable. But natural gut is so useful that even the strings that don't make the standard for sport or music can be used. Because natural gut strings do not lose tension, they are ideal for clock repairers who use them for holding pendulums. Natural gut keeps the clock running on time. The strings that meet the exacting bow brand standards are now ready for packaging and dispatch. They will go to sports shops, wholesalers, clubs, racket stringers, music shops and instrument repairers in many countries throughout the world. Other examples under the natural origin absorbable sutures are collagen, kangaroo tendon and fascia lata. Collagen is a multi-filament process which is obtained from bovine flexor tendons. Monofilament and multifilament, these are two types of suture materials. The monofilament is made of single strand and they have less tissue drag. Whereas multifilament suture materials, these are made of several filaments twisted or braided together and they are more flexible. They may be coated to reduce the tissue drag and enhance the handling characteristics. Then is kangaroo tendon. Kangaroo tendon is very expensive, so it is not used very commonly. But it has a very high tensile strength. Then is fascia lata. It is obtained from cattle and is also prepared in strips that are used to provide additional support to weakened facial layers. Earlier it was used for hernia operations also. Next is polyglycolic acid multifilament absorbable suture. It is absorbed by hydrolysis and has a relatively strong and high tensile strength than cat cut. A disadvantage is its rapid degradation compromises the mechanical strength. This potentially causes an undesirable inflammatory response. In the similar fashion, other absorbable, non-absorbable and different origin sutures are discussed in the following slides. I have attached a PDF of these slides together in the same classroom for your reference. The next topic is surgical needles. An ideal surgical needle 
should be designed to place the suture with minimum amount of trauma. It should be rigid enough to prevent excess bleeding but flexible enough to bend before breaking while using it in a tissue or a muscle. It should be sharp enough to penetrate the tissue with minimum resistance and it should be corrosion resistant. It should be ideally made from stainless steel and should be smoothly coated all over. The selection of a needle by a surgeon is determined by the type of tissue and its location in the body and the suture material, the thickness and the type which is being used in the needle. Suture materials may be threaded on eyed needles for suturing. While formerly only eyed needles were available, there is an overwhelming trend to use the eyeless needles, one or two being attached to individual strand. One such needle is manufactured with an open channel into which the suture can be placed and the channel is then swagged around the strand. Another type which is known as seamless has a very delicate hole drilled in the shank. To prevent pull out, the shank is pressed firmly about the suture. These sutures offer a great advantage in minimizing trauma. With an eyed needle, an opening in tissue must be made large enough to accommodate the needle and the thickness of suture. But with eyeless needle, the opening need only accommodate the needle, slightly larger than the single suture that follows. This is greatly esteemed in fine surgery such as plastic and ophthalmic work. A wide variety of eyeless needles on cat cut and other materials are now available to meet most of the demands of the surgeon. By a recent innovation, it has been possible to control the release of a suture from an eyeless needle by a gentle tug so that the surgeon need not take the time to cut the needle from the suture when it is no longer required. Needle points are of two types, one cutting and other round. Cutting are of again two types, reverse cutting and taper cutting. The cutting needles, needle points are basically designed to cut uh, through thick tissues or skin. The reverse cut and taper cut, the only difference is that in reverse cut, the cutting edges are along the convex surface. Whereas in taper cut, cutting tip is around the needle shaft. Needle shaft. Then in uh, round needle points, it has no cutting edges. But remain, uh, the remaining portion of the shaft is oval to prevent rotation or displacement of the needle within the jaws of the needle holder. You may find the various kinds of needle points in the next slide, the different designs, the reverse cutting, the spatula cutting, blunt cutting, etc.